Hey you guys, what's going on? This is Tanner from TanManBaseballFan.com and KinsekoCollector.com. I want to get on video here and uh, walk you all through what's kind of been going on. This is one of the biggest, uh, one of the hottest topics in our hobby right now and I wanted to talk about it. Um, on Blowout Forums, for instance, it's uh, it's been blowing up here about, uh, about this latest issue of trimming. So everybody knows what trimming is and if you don't, um, basically what would happen in the past is somebody would take a... Uh, a card that might be like a vintage card that's kind of beat up and you know have some uh, problematic corners or edges or something and somebody would take that card trim it and make it look a lot nicer than it really is uh, to combat that of course we have the uh, grading companies such as PSA SGC or BGS you uh, submit your cards and they can tell you if a card has been altered in, in that way or you know and assign a numerical grade um, so obviously trimming is a big, big no-no because nobody wants a trimmed card, right? Well, what happens if a grading company deems it to not be trimmed? So that's what we're going to be talking about a little bit here. Um, so what's been happening recently is uh, a number of cards have been surfacing online as uh, for sale and being sold. A lot of this through uh, PWCC, by the way. Uh, which is a, a consigner, a large consigner. They sell all kinds of cards on eBay. So um, anyways, what's been happening is um, uh, some cards have, uh, and I'm going to tell you, I, I believe it's a 3124508 on ComC, that user, as well as the user SuperDan49, I believe. They've done a great job uh, tracking these things down. But um, let me give you kind of an example. I'm just going to walk you through this. So this one, uh, this title says nine more trimmed 2009 Trout Elite Extra Edition Auto sold via uh, PWCC. So here's what's happening ultimately. Uh, somebody apparently, or a lot of people, are taking a card like this, uh, 2009 Donners Elite Extra Edition uh, Mike Trout, numbered 263 to 495. You see the pictures there. And... Uh, what they're doing is they're taking it and they're trimming it. Uh, I'll show you here. Now, thank, uh, thankfully, uh, who is it? Three one two four five zero eight on Comps. He uh, did a lot of work for us here. They, he circled the uh, problematic areas. So here's the edge, the corners, the corners, and look what happened here: two sixty three or four ninety five, and they got a gem mint. No more edge issues. You see that? And here's another one. Uh, this is number 367 out of 495. So you see the the problem areas here. Um, there's white on almost all the corners. There's even a little bit of an issue there, it looks like. The bat um, as well. On the back, you see some issues. Well, guess what? Number 367 to 495 looks a lot nicer. Now, doesn't it? You know, let's take a look at the bat, for instance. Yeah, you see that? No white. So, um, you yeah, know, this has happened on several of them. And it's not just this card, guys. There's a lot of them. I want to show you. Uh, all of these uh, are uh, threads on Blowout Alone, uh, talking about the findings and investigations of these people that are uh, uh, picking up these cards that are either raw or in PSA 9 format, they're serial numbered and finding them as being sold as PSA 10s. So if you're like me, um, and I've tried to think through this a little bit here because I've been having a hard time putting wrapping my brain around it because it kind of sounds like, well, wait a second, is PSA or BGS, are they, um, are they in on this? Is this a, a big conspiracy thing? Are they dirty? What about PWCC? And, uh, you know, guys, I think ultimately this is where I think that I land on this, I think, at least for now, uh, is I believe what's happening is uh, some of these guys they are trimming are taking advantage of a loophole uh, in the grading system. So I don't think that necessarily any of the graders or anything are, are to be held responsible for it uh, necessarily. I think that some steps can be taken to help the problem in the future, and I'll get to that later. But... Um, ultimately, here's my understanding of this of this whole situation is uh, at the card manufacturing companies, what they're doing whenever they uh, cut up the cards, there's going to be a slight variance on the cards whenever, whenever you cut them, right? I mean, it, it, you can't be perfect. You can't be absolutely perfect when you're printing out millions and millions of cards. It's just not going to happen. 
Um, as a matter of fact, I took out a binder of my cards and I pulled out a 1992 Bowman card and a 1997 Bowman card. The 92 Bowman card was was noticeably uh, wider, you know, so it's uh, it's really on a case by case basis. And, uh, you know, it just depends. It's just there's not perfection here. And that's understandable. I mean, you know, it's, there's nothing really <laughs> in life that's perfect. Right. So uh, so I guess what the reason or what happens for uh, SGC and BGS and PSA, I think what they do is they have uh, a minimum and maximum tolerance on the sizing of a card. So obviously we know that most standard size baseball cards are going to be two and a half inches by three and a half inches. Um, so the tolerance level might be um, 2.49995 uh, inches as a, as a minimum uh, for a width and the height might be 3.49995. So what happens is, and this is what I understand it uh, to be anyways, is somebody and probably a lot of people are taking these cards and they're finding some edge issues. And when they find a card with an edge issue, they might trim it ever so slightly. I'm not sure exactly what they would be using to do this. Um, whenever I make custom cards, I've got a, uh, um, a mechanical uh, crafting machine that helps me cut out things. But even then, it they're very rough edges. So I have to finish it off uh, with a little hand cutter deal and I couldn't imagine being this precise on these types of cards. It's kind of crazy. So I, I guess there would have to be some sort of a machine that does this um, of some sort. But um, anyway, so they're probably just slicing a, a, a hair or two off of these cards and uh, resubmitting. And there's and if they're still within the tolerance range that PSA, BGS, or SGC is, uh, is allowing for, then they're going to grade without it showing as being trimmed. So the hard pro the hard part about this for uh, everybody, um, the guys that are trimming um, mainly is that because a lot of these cards are serial numbered, you can track it. You can actually go to uh, you know pwccmarketplace.com and uh, search for one of these cards and see see them in PSA nine form, and then look them up later on uh, you know eBay if they're for sale and. Um, you can see it's the same exact card, but in a higher grade. So that's kind of what this uh, what this video is to help you out with is if you're if you're concerned about this and you have a card that you see online that you're looking for uh, for sale, that's one way to help is to look up that card by going to worthpoint.com or pwccmarketplace.com and it should be able to tell you um, if it's sold in the past. So um, I'll tell you, I'll show you kind of a little bit of a example so we'll go to pwccmarketplace.com you can sign up for a free account here and we'll do uh, 2009 trout uh, PSA 9 for example um, of elite auction and fixed price so well okay so the first one here is sold you know, PWCC, for instance. So you can see the picture here. You can look it up on WorthPoint if you want. Um, but anyway, so you know that this is uh, the serial number by going right here is, uh, is number 203, I believe it is. So if you see this card popping up down the road is a PSA 10 uh, with that with that serial number, you know something's up. Um, now, when I say something's up, I'm not really sure exactly what we do about this or what how we handle this as a, as a hobby. Um, because if the grading companies are okay with it, then, you know, I'm not really sure if there's necessarily anything that could be labeled as fraud for this. I, I don't know. I mean, if it were me and I got a PSA 10 card that I found out was trimmed earlier, I don't think I'd be too happy about it. I'd be probably a little more okay just knowing that the grading companies are okay with it, but I still don't really like it. It's a, it's kind of a, not a good, not a good feeling. So going forward, I think, think one way that could be very helpful for us as a hobby and I, and I don't think that the grain companies or PWCC have I don't think any of them have come forward with any information whatsoever on this at all by the way um, but what I think could be helpful is if the grading companies would take pictures of the front and back of cards as they grade and, and keep them in a some sort of like a searchable database I think that would be very helpful uh, to combat this issue. So um, again, I don't, I don't know if this is necessarily considered illegal, um, 
because the grading companies are, are okay with it because of this tolerance level that they might have apparently, but just not really sure what to make of it. But anyway, so, so that's where, that's where I'm at on this. Um, that hopefully will help you to combat this issue if you, uh, have issues with this as well. Um, but, uh, anyways, yeah, so that's that. Let me know if you have any questions or what your thoughts are on this. I'd love to hear them. Thanks.